Creating new solids using the interfere command. When we were using the subtract, union, and intersect commands, the original solids were deleted and they were replaced by a new composite solid. The interfere command does not do this. It actually uh, keeps or retains that new solid. So we're checking to see where the two volumes uh, share, where the two objects share volume, but we're going to save that particular uh, selection. So we're going to go up into the solid editing panel and we're going to go to interference checking. It'll ask us to select the first set of objects. Now, in this case, it's asking, do you want a, a nested selection? So that's looking for nested blocks. I can also go to my settings. In my settings, it'll have what kind of realistic, uh, I mean, what kind of visual style do you want? If you want something different than the current, you can have a color, something different than red, which is the default. So this is going to show up the highlighted uh, interference will be in red. And then you can have the viewport style. So we're going to leave everything like that. So it says select the first set of objects. I'm going to pick this sphere over here for my first set. And then I'm going to hit enter. Now it's going to ask me for my second set. And I can say nested selection too, looking for nested blocks. But I'm going to pick the torus as my second set. It's going to compare the two selection sets. Now when I hit enter, it's going to check the results. So it's checked the results. It's found the, the interference and it's highlighted in red. Now, a couple things over here. One, I can real time zoom in. So I can zoom in and I can look at it. I can press escape to go back to the dialog box. I can pan. So I can pan around and I can hit enter to go back to the dialog box and I can actually go into 3D orbit and I can tilt it however I like and then I can right click and go to exit and that brings me back to the dialog box. Now this is the key uh, thing right here. Delete interfer interference objects created on close. Generally, if I want to delete that, I would say, hey, let's not even run this command. But when I run this command, I generally want to keep it for some reason. So I'm going to uncheck that. Then I'm going to say close. Now, in here is my interference object. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make a window selection here and it should not pick up the torus or the sphere. You can see it's picked up something. You can see the move gizmo right there is in there. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to place it on a layer, layer separate layer. All right. Now, just for proof, I'm going to come along here and I'm going to freeze both my torus and there's my object. So I can save that object and use that object if needed. All right. Now, um, I'm going to undo everything. I'm going to go back and do this again. So I want to undo. Make sure I go all the way back here. Oop. Let's go back to right there. Let's do this command again. Now, let's go up to the interference checking. It'll ask us for the first set of objects. Now, it, typically we want to pick one set of objects and then hit enter and then pick a second set of objects and check the two for comparison. But, let's say for some reason you selected both sets of objects in your first set and you hit enter. Down here we have an op option that says check first set. So in other words, it's just going to look in the first selection set for any interference. So I'm going to do that. And it found it. Okay. And then I can 
uncheck this and say close. All right. And so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to select it again here. And actually, I'm just going to move it out of position. I'm going to bring it right out of here. I'm going to place it out here. And there is my interference checking object. And I've used the interference command. And this is a great way to retain those interference objects.